would receive a quality project that finishes on time and out or under budget. One of our clients jokes that, you know, he says, oh, your fee is your fee. Mel Melanie's correct. We have never, never once billed for reimbursables, ever, and we've never once, despite the track record, asked for additional expenses, ever. Um, showcase BASD. We, we have, we're based in Lytics, again, I'm originally from New York City. We have a New York City address. Okay, one of our goals this year is we, we, we just finished a project at Lower Marion, and we are going to have a Philadelphia, suburban Philadelphia office somewhere between Lit Lancaster, but outside of Philadelphia, either west or north and end of uh, Philly. So it, we have another project that we're working on now, and we really like it. We have a very difficult project. No one's told you that. It's a very difficult project for a lot of reasons. Um, it's a great match for us, and we'd like to use this as a good springboard for, for our firm as well. We are school construction experts. We don't, we, we, in the last five years, we started doing IUs and CTCs and um, some private school work, but public schools work in Pennsylvania is our mainstay. We did, we did a library because we did the high school in the town, but the public school work is our specialty. We don't, we don't deviate from that. Um, we'll take other work, you know, as reference against CTC work and and IU, IU work is very similar, but our, our wheelhouse, our focus, and what we do is PA score. The A team. A lot of firms, I've been growing up in New York City and, and dealt with a lot of big firms. A lot of firms give you, I would say, your, your B level player, your B level person on the project. You get the core people. I, I, need, I need to make a point here. We have a much bigger team. Coincidentally, Rod Glick, who would be the on site person here full time, we have a, a, a ribbon cutting community open house for a project that he's doing that happens to be tonight. We have no control over the time of this interview, but that's where Rod is and I've got nine other people on our firm. So that's why uh, that's why he's not here. But we do give you the A-team. We're, we're intimately involved with with our projects from the top down. There's no people dropped off at the job site and you know they're sort of a satellite of our firm. We're, we're small, we're only in the mid-20 range, so we're able to service our projects very, very closely. And you can't have the track record we have without doing that. I don't know if you want to come in briefly that referral. Sure. Um, my role here in this process is to do third party review on the HVAC drawings, design, uh, electrical, plumbing, also fire protection. Um, the way I see this happening, I, I've done third party review before. I've also had projects that I've designed go through third party review. As a licensed engineer, I am required to contact the design engineer and let him know, let them know that I'm going to be reviewing their, their project. But on top of that, I, I want to sit down with them from the beginning, uh, get an idea of where they're coming from, uh, what their design is based on, and just go through the process because I want to work with them as a team. Um, I don't want to make it look like, yeah, I'm looking at your drawings, I'm looking for places that you messed up. I, I don't like that approach. I like to work as a team. But with that in mind, I'm looking out for the school district's best interest. I'm looking for just errors, and it could just be as simple as drafting errors. I'm looking for details that could be better to help contractors put a price together better. Um, I'll be looking at, say for example, HVAC, I'll be looking at total tonnage you know, for, the, for the building, and I'll, I'll look at it kind of as a, call it a rule of thumb standpoint with respect to how the building is, is built and see does it make sense. If it doesn't make sense, I'm going back to the designer and saying, listen, here's what I'm coming up with. Can you justify what you're doing? Same thing with heating. Uh, same thing with electrical. We'll take a look at the electric service because I'm assuming that this building is going to need the electric service. And, and we'll see this total KVA match the size of this building and, and what you're doing. Um, in the end, I'm looking to have a, I guess, a 60% review and a 90% review. And if I sit down and set drawings myself and the other engineers in my office, and we'll go through them, we'll redline them. Uh, I'll probably contact someone from the school district to go over what my comments are. And then we'll go and we'll sit down with the design engineer and, and then go through things. Basically, like I said, a team approach to make sure that what goes out there on the street to bid and construction is the best product, best product and you know the least amount of problems during construction. And and we, we we've agreed that we're familiar with your architect. We work with your architect. We're working with your architect now. We've worked extensively with your your engineer and more engineering on this project extensively. 
we, we've agreed that we would retain Mike's firm in the construction phase as well to add help where needed as, as issues may come up because we're going to have issues and that's just, that's just reality. Uh, no, no, number five is the legal protection that runs with the project. An important and unique component of the value and service that we provide is the legal expertise that runs with your project. Dan is an experienced construction law attorney licensed in Pennsylvania, New York, and New Jersey, and I am a paralegal, a certified paralegal, with about nine years of construction-related experience. So this experience uh, provides us the ability of not only recognizing potential claims that may arise on a project, but mitigating and hopefully eliminating them before they can become real claims. And our claim track record, I think, speaks to that. We haven't had a claim filed on any project against any of the parties to the project. Um, we, we do work behind the scenes with the district solicitors on the projects that um, we have managed in the past. And um, many times, if the school district prefers, they defer any potential legal issues to us. It, it, it's totally you know, the school district's call, but we have worked directly with the school district as well. Trust, uh, excuse me for talking about that subject. Trust, our name in Latin means trust, and we, we, we came up with our name as trusted cash in Latin. The, the bottom line in any successful relationship, in any evaluation study about what makes relationships work, is, is the core of trust. If you, if you don't have trust, you can't really have a meaningful relationship. That, that's a major priority for us, obviously, it's our name, it's our reputation. And it, it's a lot of communication, it's a lot of love, it's it's a lot of things, but that, you can trust us. Our, our goal is, we have your back, and our job is to protect you from problems. If you do any research on your front, on our front, you won't find it because we just are that intense in our, in our service. Cost control, change orders are not a, a right to a contractor. Change orders are your right if you want to add scope to a project. We're pretty militant about change orders. If um, we, we hope to, to prevent them, if we can't prevent them, if we can horse trade something, or if, if worst case, mitigate them, so at the end of the day, what you're paying is, is the absolute fair value for what you're, what you're asking for. Um, uh, again, track record. Um, ch ch contractors, and special, especially in today's marketplace, cost on a project is such a big deal. Contractors are taking job below below market rates just to get the job to stay in business. Fortunately, we've actually grown through the downsizing economy. But the, the reality is, it is there's a great deal of stress on contractors to find money after they get the job, and that's we think we're pretty pretty good at that. Problem prevention. Mel pretty much covered that. And you, there's lots of people out there who can fix complex problems, and we actually enjoy that. The real goal is to prevent them in the first place. You, you don't want the, that, that problem in the newspaper, that issue that wasn't thought about, or, or we forgot that, or maybe we should have done that, done that better. Maybe, well, why didn't you figure that out in your original project? You want the problems to not happen in the first place. <coughs> so that, that's a little sense for us. Better than insurance. Two of our clients came up with this, so we threw it in there. You buy insurance to cover a loss. Two particular clients, it was actually Lancaster and Fleetwood, their comment to us was, when hiring you guys, your fee literally pays for itself. So it's not like you're paying an amount of money that you just lose and you only get any value out of it if you have a loss. And hiring us, our, our clients believe that the, the, the reduction in terms of pro project stress, change orders that don't happen, issues you don't have to deal with, litigation that never happens, pays basically for the services we offer. Finally, track record. Words that matter most are the ones that come from the clients that we have served. It's easy for us to sit here and tell you why you should hire Fidelity to be your partner on your high school renovation project, but backing those words up is something entirely different. So we would ask you to take some time, <coughs> uh, take a look at the recommendations that we have received, the words and experiences from our clients, and um, as to what our, our clients have to say as for our track record. And the next five pages are redacted quotes from letters we've received from our clients. We, we intentionally picked up Van Township as the first three because if, if you read through them, I sat through the last board meeting you had and I kind of listened to the, the back and forth about the project issues and concerns that you have. And just reading through those first few quotes just made me think a lot. This is your project and, and this is how your project could turn out. So I thought it would be a great example. But really, any of the references we, we added in there 
anybody can tell you what they do. Just, but, but the people we've already served, we think are the best reference possible. And hopefully you write letters about this at the end of the project. And we have our, our project team, which is, again, pretty much everyone is at that open house right now, except for us. Um, we're going there after this. Um, that's our team. Rod is a salt of the earth guy. He's the full-time person, Rod Glick, on the right-hand side. That would be dedicated to the project. He's the kind of guy that the principals want in their school plays with the kids. He's been in school plays with kids. He, 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 he breathes, sweats, cries with the teachers, and with the principal, rather, and, and the people, because he takes the job that personally, and you love him. We'd be happy to bring back our team if, uh, if you would like to meet these other individuals. Uh, we, we added one page, and I just want to hit it real quick, and I apologize for talking so quick. The fees we gave you, there's a breakdown page, it's a speed breakdown. We, we took a careful look at the project. We think those fees are representative of the project you had. We are, we have yet to be high on a project. Our fees are always low. We've never had a project where our fees are, are low. However, I just want to share with you your consideration. For a project this size, what we show is the lower half of the page would, would be our typical fee structure for a project of this size. The difference, the delta between the 428 and the numbers above, we also have another person, in addition to a full-time person on site, we added a two-thirds of another person full-time on site. When we did that, it's in our opinion, and we've been doing this for a long time and we've been doing a lot of it. Your high school renovation is extremely complex. You have basically your, your, this tremendous renovation with, with not a lot of addition. It's all surgical in nature. Your population is in place. That job has to run well. And in all our projects, we've only had one full-time person on site. It's always, always been one. But, but knowing what we know about your project, we think that we value and having that extra person two-thirds of their time on site full-time. Normally, we would have other people involved in the project that come in surgically for job conferences, meetings, whatever you may require. Again, whatever it takes to facilitate the project. What I'm trying to show you is the Delta. We did, we did include that extra full-time person on site because we, we, we believe in our experience. I mean, the project that we're ground where we have the ribbon cutting tonight was an extensive middle school renovation of a large middle school. And we, we gutted it out. It was, you know, it, was, it, was, we, it was a great experience, but it was a lot of sacrifice for everybody. And the importance of having that, that extra person we think is valuable. Having said that, if you came back to us and said that for the sake of the project, we don't want to lose a job for the sake of just because we overextended the resources we felt. Five minutes left? Yeah. Ah, oh. uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we truly believe it. We haven't done as much as we've done. We think our proposal is dead on, and including Mike's services, including what we, we bring to the project. We know we, 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 we're comfortable with our numbers that we gave you, but I don't want to leave the table, leave the room thinking, oh, well, we lost the job because our fee was, you know, it should have been something else, or it could have been better, or we don't have that in our budget. It was a very <coughs> large project um, and a very complex project. But I, again, with the, with the mentality that I wouldn't look at us as insurance. I look at look at us as a value that you get back by the savings we bring to the project. And there's no gimmicks. I mean, again, if you read our letters of recommendation, it, 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 that kind of speaks for the, the speaking that we're not too eloquent about doing. If you want to talk about any construction issues, I'd love to talk to you about construction. Uh, and, thank you. Any questions? Yes. Um, the fee is four hundred forty-eight thousand. That's for one person. One time. Four. Four time. I'm sorry. That's the one. That's one full-time person. Right. And then up at the top, you have for twenty months and for twenty-three months. Right. That's because the RFP. We saw two, two directions in the RFP. It said it, it, we read it as it could go either way. So that's why we quoted the two separate prices. So if it goes twenty months, it would be that one price. And that's it for one and two thirds per? Not the numbers. Yeah, the numbers are on top, yes. Yeah. yes. Thank you. This is Jeff. You have a pre construction fee of thirty thousand and a <coughs> pre construction cost of sixty three thousand. Explain that to me. Pre it's actually thirty seven, the adding the delta that we added for the mic's work. So it's thirty seven. Because we normally do what's thirty seven? I'm sorry, in the breakdown it's thirty four seven. Okay, and over here at 63. 63, 63 is what we carried in the in the RFP response. That's what we carried. What do we, what do we get in a pre-construction cost? You're not you're not involved with the construction starts, are you? 
Or do you know what in no. pre construction? No. Wait, 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 you, you have plans that are taken so far. Do those plans reflect exactly what you want as a district? Do, are they, have they been, do you have an independent estimate of those plans? When they go out on the street, we, fortunately we're going to have this problem, but you want the project to come in at the numbers you put out on the street and not have to rebid, not have a project that you can't do because you designed something that winds up being too expensive on bid day. So we do estimating throughout the project. We do value engineering. In this case, that's why we added a $7,000 double to Mike's firm. We, we have people, we have a civil engineer on staff, and obviously we have a lot of construction experience. But in this case, we'd be working together. So we, there's an additional plus that some of it's covered in our 30, but together we'll be working on, on doing value engineering to, to criticize the design in a healthy way. Again, EI is not an enemy. EI is a firm we work with, and we work with more engineering. But another pair of eyes to surgically look at the documents. I sat through your board meeting. It, it's, it's intimately obvious that there's a lot of concern that you're spending a lot of money. There's, this is a, a, a great challenge for the, for the district. It's your your project and you want it to go well. So between doing the estimating, the value engineering, the constructability review, perhaps there's other ideas beyond what the plans show in terms of materials or plans, the phasing of the project, I don't know how much thought has gone into how you're going to phase a 2023 month project and have your extracurricular and curricular environment and program go without interruption. To me, that's like, we've been through it. You know, you, you want this project to run smoothly. Do, do you have any, any hazardous materials, asbestos? Do you have how, how close are the kids going to be? We, we try to keep the contractors in a box so that they are in a box. And then there's no interference and then with, with, the, with the curricular environment. You have a, a, a very compact site. You have buildings all around you. It's, it's not a building that's off in the woods by itself that you can, it's just, you have a tough project. So um, to answer your question, you, you'll have, Melanie, Melanie runs our pre-construction process. She, she, she's the hound dog, she's as detailed, as better than I could even imagine being, and she, she makes sure we meet all our dates, and everyone's doing doing their job. I'm intimately involved with everything because I've just left it around forever, and I have lots of ideas. Mike and his firm are going to be reviewing engineering with the, the guts, and you're running for the renovation project. Even though you have some surgical additions, you have some walls and things that are changing, you want your mechanical electrical plumbing systems are key for that renovation. So the importance of having that, that engineering review before it goes out on the street to prevent change orders, to prevent problems. We've been on projects, many projects, where things just don't get designed well. Um, so now I'm talking too much. I'm talking too much. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the gong. Uh, <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> Thanks, John. Two questions. One, uh, you mentioned cost control change orders. What percentage of uh, change orders do you normally have on a job if you were to average it out? About one. About one we've, had, we've had, uh, I mentioned Fleetwood earlier, we had negative change orders on there. With the Berks County IU, we had negative change orders there. We oftentimes have negative change orders. Okay. Um, but we've had have some that creep up a little bit. Sure. The, the chance of change orders on a heavy renovation project are the greatest. For obvious reasons. But as you have unforeseen conditions behind walls that you don't you don't know. Um, again, why the phasing plan is so critical on this job that everything sisters in well when it's given to the contractors. Because they're going to be praying, you see our new project, they're going to be praying on holes in your project where they can find whether the sequencing doesn't work, the mechanical electrical plumbing doesn't sister in properly, so that they need extras to do temporary facilities. There's so many places where you can be hit. What was the second question? I'm sorry. Did you, did you well, I didn't ask it yet. Oh. <laughs> 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 it's a time I didn't interrupt you. You were on a roll. So, <laughs> question two, you mentioned uh, never fail to move a client in on time. Yeah. Uh, what percentage of you, the jobs that you uh, over, oversee were over budget? Never. Never. Never over budget. Never. We have one job come in on bid day over budget. We Two jobs come in on bid day over budget. Both jobs, we we helped the architect, we worked with the car, we worked in the street, come up with all the things that had to be value engineered to, to pull out of the project and make the project work, rebid, payment of the budget, and in the rebidding process in managing the documents, we reworked the phasing and we finished on the original schedule. So, so never. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Can you talk about student safety? Yeah. Um, It's the most important. Thing. I mean, do you have any metrics or data around safety? You, you, you'll never hear anything about it. I mean, that's why I've mean, never heard, you'll never find anything anywhere about it. You, you're going to have everyone's got all the contracts that came to today's market have to give you the requisite clearances. 
that, that prove they, they don't have a bad history. We'll manage that process or we'll, we'll help you manage it however you decide. I mean, that's, that's something we normally do. Keeping the contract in the box, that's a critical thing. We've never had it, in, besides school safety, we've never had, other than you know, like scrapes, we've never had a contractor incident, ever. So, um, yeah, I mean, school. Containing the contractor is a bug. Critical. It, it is critical. And um, same with smoking, bad language. I mean, we're pretty Music. diligent about their conduct on a construction site with children and faculty around. So if you can't maintain school safety for the, for the kids, they aren't because you shouldn't do the job. And uh, yeah, so that's that issue I get on board this. Any other questions? Uh, I have just two, I think. Mike, if you're firm, how many employees do you have? We have 15. And, okay, in here he says, I think it there says 14, but we recently had it. No, up here. It says total employees of 22. That doesn't include your 15? No. I, I, we have some guys that we bring in. They're kind of like part-time guys that are retired, and they help us out when our workload gets heavy. That's, I, I think that's where that's coming from. And one more question. Will management, will manage it, or you can manage it, was your comment made a few moments ago? Why? Oh the, oh, the Act 34 process. The Act 34 No, no, I think we're talking about managing the construction the project. No, no, no. Oh, just Act 34? Yeah. Okay, I'm just saying. So, I mean, Laura, Ma Laura managed a good, it was just a clear Laura managed a good example. They, they, they had a lot of litigation Laura there. And they wanted, they wanted to run the process. We would collect all the forms, and then we'd provide it to their human resource department, and then they would, they would screen it after that. Almost all, almost all our clients let us manage that. This was only in the Act 34 then? Yes. Okay. Yeah, our, our attitude is if there's any problem on the pro project, it's our problem. And, and, and to take it a step further, we kind of take it personally. So, um, yeah, no, you shouldn't have to do anything except to make decisions for the things you want in the project. Why would you have it? I uh, had an original question that I went through your, your book here. You handle a lot of a lot of schools. I, I wonder how many were in that 1.3 billion because your, your firm is, uh, as I see it, 10 years old. So I, you, you can just work. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Pretty Any other work. question? They, they, oh, yeah. Do we have to, do, do we owe any time? Nope. <laughs> I just have one comment. Just on, on personal note, well, not only is any Fisher Associates based in Boyer Town, but I grew up right up the street. I went to Coverdale. I went to West. I graduated from Boyer Town High School. So not that I don't care about all my projects, but I care a little bit more about this. I'd like to talk to you sometime privately. <laughs> 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 okay. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.